We can start? Okay, we'll start now. So, uh, good morning. Welcome to SES B324, the excitingly named Project 2013 What's New for IT Professionals, here in sunny Madrid. For those of you who are listening and watching this presentation uh, on the recording, uh, welcome to a packed room in Madrid this morning. I'd like to, it's good to see you all here. And I, Ian White, uh, from Microsoft, and my colleague, Peter Kesterholz, from Projectum, a Danish partner, will be presenting to you this morning. Yes, absolutely. Um, and today's agenda and, and topic and, and objectives, actually, is for you to, to learn about the, um, the key enhancements that are available within the Project 2013 solution. Uh, both from a client perspective and server perspective. It's an IT pro session, so it, it will go into the details regarding development and, and configuration and other enhancements in general. Uh, the main topics are online, scalability, uh, flexibility, and then development at the end. And there's also something about the BI part, the business intelligence, which will come in the end. Um, before we start off the, the, the presentation deck, we just have a small video we would like to share with you, just a second, to just kick off this online session. Sarah is the Executive Vice President of Women's Wear for a national retailer. She manages a team that manages multiple projects. Many projects are large, others are small or just getting started. To handle it all, Sarah and her team use Microsoft Project Online, a cloud-based solution which allows them to work together on projects and gives Sarah visibility and insight across everything. With a single view of all the work that matters to her, Sarah can make smart decisions about her team's projects. She can prioritize projects based on which ones best align with the company's strategy and staff accordingly. Once in place, Sarah and her team can work and collaborate from almost anywhere on almost any device, as well as follow people and documents that are important to their projects. When needed, she and her team can easily create powerful, flexible reports and keep others up to date. Project Online gives Sarah and her team one location, in the cloud and delivered by Microsoft, where they can do everything they need to prioritize, manage, and collaborate on projects large and small, which means Sarah and her team can deliver the intended business results. Project Portfolio Management, in the cloud. So today we're going to be walking you through in quite some depth the, both the client and the server base offering. Now, as you know, in um, click it on one. As you know, in um, the new release for uh, 2013 and for Office 365, we've got two main deliveries. We've got both got the classic on-premise delivery, where you build your servers, you deploy your clients. But now through Office 365, we have our project online environment, and that gives us the ability for you to pretty well instantly provision a sophisticated project environment without having to go through all the, often the hassle there may be of getting IT to deploy uh, new SharePoint sites, SQL instances, plus the, uh, the project server as well, and just really get um, uh, functioning and deliver value into your organization as quickly as you possibly can. Now, essentially, there are, similar to that which we have on-premise, two different flavors of this. There is the pure project online, and this essentially is access through to the project web app, which you may have had on-premise. And this is entirely a browser experience, and it delivers you all the things that you may need to have, from the original demand management through to the uh, governance, the controls of which projects you're going to do, the resource management, resource allocation, uh, simple project management through our online project client, through to the reporting, integration with SharePoint, and um, essentially, it doesn't really matter what sort of 
device you wish to interface this with. So, for example, if you've got people inside your organization that are using tablets of whatever flavor, whether they be based on Microsoft technology or from our competitor technology, we will support those through our Project Web App interface. The Project Professional Client has a slightly different name if you purchase it through the Office 365 environment. It's called Project Pro as opposed to Project Professional. And we use that just to simply differentiate the way you're purchasing it. If you purchase it from, for on-premise, you're buying it with a, both of these things with perpetual licenses, although you may well have software assurance to say that, ensure that you stay up to date. If you buy it through the Office 365 environment, you're buying it on a subscription basis, on a monthly basis, that allows you huge flexibility in terms of adding or removing people as you're going through your project lifecycle. Project Pro with, project, with Office Project Online for Office 365 essentially is the rich client plus the subscription that gives you all the features you'd have if you were connecting Project Professional through to a project server on premise. So all the capabilities that a project manager needs to have in terms of the advanced planning, the ability to uh, have the draft and published versions uh, locally uh, cached on your system, and takes advantage of the click-to-run technology, which means that essentially you can start using it pretty well immediately after you start installing it. So the way that the new click-to-run technology works is that it delivers you the software rather than having to have the whole package installed it does it in a more of a segmented basis, so it gives you the things you need to to get started. It's very secure. We push the patches to you, and which is different from the on-premise version. On the on-premise version, you need to have one license per device that you use the Project Professional on. In the Office 365 version, you can have five devices without having to purchase any additional licenses. So I'll hand back to Peter now. Great. Um, looking at the architecture layer behind online and comparing that to the on-premise solution, this is first of all the on-premise architecture uh, from a high-level perspective, um, meaning that we have the, the project web app, which is the, the project portal where people will get access to from a browser typically. We're going to go back to that later in details. We have uh, for project managers, we have the project pro like Ian just talked about, um, the project professional, the client as well. We have the server layer down here, the application layer, and then we have as the SharePoint server, SQL server, Windows server, and all of this plus the requirements, we're going to come back to that. So don't worry if I'm talking fast right now. The point is that when, when we, once we're talking about project online, um, this exact scenario would look a little bit like this instead, meaning that all the stuff around the service application, uh, the database, uh, the SharePoint, the Windows server, and all of that, including maintenance and operational stuff, will be handled instead um, by Microsoft, actually. Um, so, meaning that Project Online is, is where you will have that kind of uh, backbone uh, using your project server solution. And also, it's worth uh, mentioning that the marketplace, which is in the bottom down here, mean, meaning that you get access, access to apps, uh, solutions, that again can be deployed automatically. Um, we're going to come back to that and show examples later also. Um, but just for the record, I know that some people think that, think that ma the marketplace is just for the, uh, the online but it is not. So Marketplace is obviously also for, for client and also for, for um, on-premise installation as well. So it works both ways. Um, when it comes to administrating Project Online, um, there are three different layers that you have to, to know about. And, and this is where you can administrate the whole solution as a, um, as a whole. Um, first of all, we have the Office 365 portal, which some of you may or may not know because you perhaps are using it already today. And this is where you sign up uh, initially. You create your, 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 your project instance, your SharePoint instance. You create users, you purchase licenses, uh, etc. And then you have the SharePoint admin center uh, in which you can create new site collections um, and also set up your quotas. And at the end, at the bottom here, we have the project web uh, app, which is where you can maintain just the part that has to do with, with the project service application. So just to give you a, a small example on this uh, live demo, um, I'm going to skip to this one, that's easier. 
just a second. I'm just going to lock on. So first of all, this is the lock on screen that you're going to, to use. Going to lock on with your credentials um, since I'm not synchronized with any AD. Just a second. Like this, which will bring me initially to the Office 365 admin page. So this is where, um, first of all, you can manage your users, your licenses. For instance, this is me. I have access to Project Online, Office Web Apps, SharePoint Online. Um, this is also where you can get a brief overview on the current status of your um, Office 365 instance, meaning that you have Service Health, for instance, where you can see um, how things are going, if there's any issues that needs to be handled, and if so, um, it will be handled by Microsoft and tell you exactly what was done in a service log as well. So that, that's really nice to get out of the box without having to, to worry about it. Um, moving from this layer, we have the, the SharePoint layer, which is the second layer, in which you can, first of all, see your site collections. And in this case, notice that we have site collections that are normal SharePoint site collections, and we have site collections that are with Project Web App. So in order for you to, to, to create a new Project Web App instance, it's just to go to New and create a private site collection with a Project Web App um, within it. There's a lot of stuff worth mentioning here regarding permissions, which we're going to go back to again later in, in the sessions. Um, the final point is, let's just open this one up. Um, going into the PWA, which is this um, main page, um, we have the server settings here as well which is similar to what you might have or might not have seen before in Project Server, uh, the on-premise uh, edition. Um, so obviously you can here, as a PMO, for instance, manage your settings, your views, your custom fields, etc. So it's that's similar to, um, to what you might have seen before. So those are, those are the three different layers that we, we work with when it comes to um, Project Online and the administration part. So we'll mention one thing. It's worth noting on the admin, that very first page that we saw previously, that there is a support button on the left-hand side. And quite differently from when you're running on-premise, if you go to the support button and you create a new service request, you are connecting directly with the on-call engineers that we have in our data centers and the people who support this. And I promise you, the response times you get on this are fantastic. And it's, for those of you who are running on-premise at the moment, it's a very, very different experience than the one that you're having presently because of the escalation process that you need to do with on-premise. So I think this is a real big plus of the cloud-based delivery that we're offering today. Exactly. Great. So our next topic is uh, scalable, scalability. And for this, I'm going to see some hands. OK, so um, I would like you all to raise your hands. This is part of morning exercise. Uh, if, you're watch, if you're watching this on the um, recording, no, no, raise them up and hold them up there. I want to see them all. All hands, thank you. If you are using, if you are using the current version of Project or an older version, can you leave your hands up? And anybody else who's not ever used it, put your hands down. Okay? So about 50-50. Okay? Fine. Thank you very much. It's because of what we show you next, really, we wanted to understand what our audience ex uh, experience was. Okay, and those of you at home watching this over the recording, you can put your hands down as well. Okay, so as we move on to the next slide, as I move on to the next slide, yeah. um, I take over? this is your slide? Yeah. So you should yes. take over. <laughs> These are the, again, uh, the high level but very important enhancements to know about regarding the, the, the PPM solution as a whole. Um, it's a technical uh, uh, walkthrough, I would say, with 10 bullets, uh, but it's very interesting for, for you to know, especially if you have been using Project Server uh, previously. So first of all, this is just, I'm going to go through it rapidly for the other half of you who have not um, maybe um, tried Project Server before. The AD synchronization has been uh, optimized uh, extremely. So now it's a matter of seconds and not minutes for those of you who have tried that before, which is a good thing if you have a lot of resources, obviously. But some of you who are in very large organizations may experience hours worth of synchronization yeah. with your yeah. Active Directory. This is a massive reason for upgrading, whether to on-premise or to online to the latest release. Yes. Secondly, SharePoint Design and Visio can now work with, with the Project Web App as well. 
um, which means that you can actually create your workflows um, using those tools and maintain them as well, change them as well. But previously it had to be done by .NET or using third-party applications as well. Um, so that's a, a nice improvement as well for especially the PMOs. If you're interested in knowing a little bit more about how Visio works with, and SharePoint Designer works with Project Server, please stop by our booth because I can show you that because Visio is one of my areas of expertise. Yes. Then from the database perspective, previously we had four databases um, and now we just have one. So on how to get those four into one if you want to do an upgrade, again, we're going to come back to that during the, uh, the upgrade process. But this is, again, a massive improvement, and it will make it easier for you to maintain, obviously, your databases and back them up and restore them, and et cetera. Um, I just want to point out, those of you who've got existing um, installations on 2007 or 2010, your reports that you've built on the reporting database still work without change, because the only tables that haven't been changed are the reporting tables. Yes. So the connections and all the... Uh, uh, filters and everything else that you've set up, they will continue to operate exactly as they did previously. Yes. Baselines and recalculate is available from the web. And this is because there's a new service involved in the project server um, architectural layer, that meaning that what the client is able to do when you do some changes within the project client, you will see the results right, right away. Previously, if you used the project web part called schedule and you did your plans from the project web app, you would see that you had to click the recalculate button in order for your changes to actually uh, have an impact. So in this case now, what you're doing will simultaneously uh, show you the results, uh, just as if you were in the client. So that's a, that's a strong one. And baselines, obviously, you can now set baselines the same way as you do it in the client. You can do that from the project web, app, uh, web part as well. So the real important issue here is that the calculation engine in the uh, project web app is the same calculation engine now that's in the client. But it doesn't mean to say you'll have the same results exactly because there are still some fields that you don't have access to in the um, web app that you do have access to in the rich client, yes. which may affect the way that the outcome um, projects. Exactly. Then we have the new reporting engine in the project client, which we're going to show you examples of live today, and I'm going to come back to uh, a lot more. But it, uh, this is the first time, I think, in, in many years that the reporting section within the project client has been changed, uh, and really changed. It has a new ribbon and, and also. Um, it is done all, also to give end users the, the Excel look, and, but also Excel feel, um, to build up uh, similar to pivot tables, but doing that within the project client without having to navigate out of it. You can still push data to Excel spreadsheets and work within there, but you can also stick or stay within the project client and do more or less the same. Actually, I think it looks nicer, but that's just my opinion. You'll see it later. Um, and then do some really cool reports, um, printable as well. Uh, yes? Uh, and tremendous integration with PowerPoint, which we'll show as well. Yeah. Um, Timesheets does not use the queue. So for those of, those you, of, you, who go, yeah. those of you who are existing, you should go woohoo at this point in time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it goes directly to the database. Um, I think that goes without saying any more. Um, the timeline view is now a web part, meaning that the timeline view that has been available in 2010 Project Pro um, is now available also on the CRPON sites for the team members to see it, but, but also um, everywhere else uh, that you might need it within your um, your project web app, meaning also on the project center side. So if you have a portfolio overview, you can see all your projects and your milestones in one big um, time phase timeline, which is, when, which is what we know that most of the PMOs or the portfolio managers, they want this report. There's a question. Yeah. So, so, so okay, the question is, is it the same? Yeah. yeah, the question is, is it the same visual experience when you're using project professional or using the project web app? And the answer to that is the, it's identical, okay? And basically the SharePoint team, as well as the project team, uh, are using the same rendering to render the timeline, both in the client and in the uh, browser, and you really do not see any difference at all, as we'll show you uh, later. And in fact, you can manipulate it within the, um, if you're doing stuff as particularly within uh, the project site, the changes you make will also flow back down into the um, project professional, even if you're making 
the changes on the uh, through the project web app. Yeah. And Azure and Marketplace ready. So meaning that you can host your some of your perhaps your own custom data sets and databases in Azure and connect that to Project Online or on premise. And also marketplace ready, meaning that we can of course add apps um, and upload apps and do our internal apps and put them on our instances of Project Web App as well. So um, that's the short way of. <laughs> no, there's a, uh, but there's also another aspect of the Azure which we don't really touch in the presentation, but it's worthwhile mentioning it at this point, and that is what we call IAAS infrastructure as a service, and that means that you can run the project server environment, an on-premise environment but you can run it in the Azure virtual environment and so effectively have a, a halfway house between not running on premise mm -hmm. but not going to full software as a service. So you've got this infrastructure as a service. And again, if you'd like to know more about that, stop by the stand and we can talk to you about uh, going, what you need to do to go about that. Yeah. And finally, link ready. So presence and the ability to communicate with your team members, other project managers, and so on, is available from the client and obviously also from the SharePoint portal. So when you add a resource within the client, uh, which I think you will show tomorrow, there's a session as well, you can see automatically whether or not that person is available. And before you add that person, you can obviously ask the question also whether or not uh, he or she um, actually have the skills or the time to do it and communicate. Um, so that's a new feature as well, which is quite nice. Um, then there's a lot of performance improvements as well on, on the, the three tires or the three layers of the, of the solution. Um, worth mentioning here is that on the web tire or the, the web front end, um, page load times have been increased massively. Um, so we're talking about some numbers up in the right corner here, meaning that the resource sensor view now loads 71% faster, the timesheet's 50% faster, the project schedule which is a planning web part. 90% faster, and the home page actually loads 72% faster, which I think is quite interesting as most users will access the home page multiple times during the day. So if that loads almost two times faster, it has a huge impact. Um, yeah. This is due to all round optimization. So this is where they've really looked at the code, they've sniffed the network, they've looked at where they weren't doing things as efficiently as they could have done, and whether that's in the SQL access in the way that they construct the pages, the way they authenticate. There are many different aspects of why this performance has increased. So all round. Now, you know, the percentage increases don't tell you how it's going to affect you specifically, because this was done obviously in our engineering department, and they took the same hardware and the same data sets and migrated across and they measured it. You may not get exactly the same benefits, but you will get huge benefits. And it is worthwhile as you, those of you who have got existing um, deployments as you move towards 2013, to do some benchmarks so that you can actually show your colleagues what the improvements have been. Because sometimes people quickly yeah. forget what it was like previously. Yes, absolutely. Um, software requirements. Ah. Sure, sure. Um, the software requirements are pretty well what you would expect to have. Uh, the most important thing about this page is that the, is the minimum word there. It's the minimum. It's not what we would necessarily suggest as your optimum. So we would always recommend that you go and look at TechNet uh, when you're thinking about doing a deployment because there are sizing guides uh, to explain to you what the impact will be depending on the data sets and the number of users that you expect to have. So some of this stuff is fairly straightforward in terms of the on-premise deployment. And bear in mind, we're looking at on-premise at the moment. So um, on this uh, block, essentially, you're looking at the uh, underlying stack from Microsoft. And notice there that uh, Exchange is optional. And it's optional because there are some new capabilities through what we call the workflow management service for task integration. And it will allow tasks that you allocate to your resources to flow back into their outlook through Exchange integration. And they can start to record time as well and progress and have that move backwards and forwards. Uh, that's probably quite a mature deployment if you're doing that, but it's important to know that if you want to do that, you need to have 2013. When we talk come to the browsers, you can use browser of choice now, obviously as long as it's a reasonably current version. So I have successfully 
very successfully access the um, online version, which is the same restrictions, with my wife's iPad. I hasten to put it, it's not my iPad. Uh, but also with Safari browsers and Firefox and Chrome. In fact, I often will demo with Chrome just to show people that well, there is a browser parity. And also that, you know, you know, we live in the real world. We don't live in a pure IE world anymore. Um, there is, uh, as we will say formally, uh, to use Project Professional, you need to have Windows 7 or Windows 8, uh, or even 8.1 when it comes out, uh, at least the beta. I think it's tomorrow. Um, and th there is no backwards compatibility. We will come to this before. So we're talking about 2013, Project Pro or Project Professional 2013. Um, if you want to light up the presence awareness of people, then the uh, link stack can be based upon 2010 or beyond 2013. And as we said, check TechNet. These things are ever-changing. And just because of what you've seen or you listened to on this presentation doesn't mean to say in six months' time it's going to be exactly the same as we release cumulative updates and service packs and the various other things. It may, there may be more flexibility. In some areas, there may be other uh, restrictions or uh, requirements that we uh, ask you to uh, deploy. So always check te TechNet for the latest guidance on these things. Great. So for those of you already using Project Server, um, the first question in mind will be how to upgrade actually that, that solution. And this is where we separate between moving from 2010 to 2013 or moving from previous versions, meaning 2003, 2007, um, and to 2013. Um, first of all, moving from 2010 to 2013 is uh, it's quite simple, actually, because there's a full database attach upgrade supported. So you can attach your databases, and it will automatically prepare them um, and consolidate them into one database, which is line three. So that is not uh, the, the pain point at all. Um, regarding previous versions, you cannot do a full database upgrade, uh, but you can upgrade them through some, migrate, um, from some established migration path, meaning that it is supported and that there is um, a lot of materials that can help you through that process. But you have to upgrade from 3 to 7, and from 7 to 10, and, and so on, if you want to migrate from a very old uh, version to the latest. Um, yeah. We do provide you, for those of you who are on 2000, uh, have older versions, hey, you may have 2003, may have 2007, particularly of 2003, because you have to go to 2007 first of all. There is a virtual machine that you can have which will um, deploy your 2007 environment just temporarily so that you can move your 2003 through to 2010 and then do the attach upgrade. Yeah. Um, there's no backward compatibility mode, meaning that you cannot access Project Server 2013 or online using uh, the client 2010, Project Pro client 2010, uh, or older versions. So it has to be a 2013 to 2013 relationship. Um, and there's a lot of more documentation uh, regarding the upgrade process in general that can be found on TechNet um, at this address in the, at the bottom. Um, and this, I think, is available for download as well. Yeah. And don't worry, that very last line that says it's confidential Microsoft only, <laughs> this isn't confidential Microsoft nope. only anymore. <laughs> That's true. Good. Um, on the flexibility, yeah? Let's go back, because I yes. think that, that, whoops. It's worthwhile just talking about that a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. The automatic database consolidation. Well, just as I mentioned in, in the 2010 to 13, uh, upgrade path. Um, the four databases that you have currently, uh, the draft, published, reporting, and archive, will be merged into one instead. And that happens automatically uh, by, the, by the system. So, so for the admins, um, this is not a, a, a new uh, technical uh, skill that you need to, to, um, to find within yourself. It's, uh, it's automatically done for you. So what you get in 2013 are exactly the same table names that you had in all the four different databases previously, but there's just a prefix that they put in front of it for the draft, for the publish, and for the archive. As I said before, the reporting tables stay exactly the same name as they had previously. You can imagine, though, for those of you who've used previous versions, when you're moving data, particularly between draft and published, the performance of doing it between two databases or between two different tables is significantly different. 
and that's one of the big advantages that we've got. Yeah. On the flexibility side, um, there are some, again, key enhancements that are worth mentioning. Uh, first of all, there's the two permission mode model right now. So, meaning that your project server or project online instance can handle user rights or user security using a SharePoint permission mode, meaning the default SharePoint permission mode with groups and users, or more the legacy mode, the project permission mode, which you might have seen before using project server, where you have the categories, the groups, and the users separated from the, from the SharePoint uh, environment. Um, just to give you a small screen dump of how that looks, it looks like this. You can switch between them, but what you really need to know is that if you switch between them and you have a production environment, um, it would automatically uh, remove everything you have done previously in terms of setting up security, uh, the security model. So you have to, to find out before you migrate, before you upgrade, before you reinstall, uh, what kind of model that fits you the best. Um, and for some, uh, let's say, uh, less mature uh, PMO functions or, or companies, the SharePoint mode might be the, the easy way to start because IT knows about it and can support it quite easily. Whereas the project permission mode requires uh, another detail level uh, of knowledge when it comes to handling user rights because we have the category aspect as well. But for those who, are, who have a lot of users, a lot of views, um, and a lot of security, where some people can see something and others cannot, I think that the, the project permission mode is still a strong way of, of handling uh, user security in general compared to, um, to just using SharePoint. But the good thing is everything is now supported, or both ways is now supported. Um, it, another thing that is quite, quite on the flexibility side is that it now in, includes um, working with task lists and project sites as well, meaning that to, to, um, to compare it, that a, a SharePoint site that has a task list is for project server or online also a project, whereas previously it was something else. Um, so if you want to run your project using just a task list within a SharePoint site, it's quite all right. It is supported, and it will be shown also on your project sensor main page. So that is a, a quite new thing for, uh, for projects to support that. Um, and a cool feature. I'm going to come back to that uh, later. And tomorrow, I think, also there will be an in-depth session on just this topic. Demand management as well. It now includes free-form proposal collection using SharePoint lists. I mean, you can quite easily set up a SharePoint list where you want to capture ideas, you want to rank them and uh, score them. And from that list in itself, you can upgrade list elements directly to a project plan or an EPT for those who know what that is, a project type, and work with it from there um, by giving it uh, more data in order for it to be approved later on by the portfolio management. So capturing those inputs and insights is now very easy to set up um, also for the PMOs themselves as it requires no developer um, capabilities. Um, also, the last final bullet, field mapping tool to move data, meaning that you move data from the SharePoint list, which has perhaps a lot of different columns, and when you move that project, it will automatically ask you where the different fields or information belongs to within the project server or the custom fields within project server. So that's a tool for that as well. Um, other enhancements are, as mentioned earlier, the SharePoint design and Visio now is, supports Windows Workflow 4.0. Um, which is strong, obviously. And again, please come by the booth and see it because I think it's worth seeing for those of you who've, who've, who've never tried it before or uses workflows already today. There's the new apps management, meaning that you now have apps availability. You can download, or not download, but, but uh, get apps uh, installed or deployed to your project online or project uh, on-premise instance. Um, but there's also a whole security model around how to manage those apps, meaning licenses, because uh, obviously some of them cost money. So that can be handled centralized, and also the access for users who can access the apps and who cannot is also centralized in terms of um, managing them. There's role-based administration now, uh, especially when you look at the um, on-premise uh, edition. Uh, previously, if you had to do anything regarding OLAP cubes for reporting purposes um, and, and the queue and all that, it would be the same place as where you would find creating a new user or creating a view. So that meant that the server settings in Project Server was, was typically something where both IT, heavy backend IT people would have to go into in order to, to, um, to administrate Project Server, and the PMOs would also have to go in there. Now it's, it's separated. So the cube and the, the really back-end side of Project Server is now um, within SharePoint central administration. 
instead of being within the project server. So the PMO have, have their place to do the maintenance and the, the, um, the IT administrators have a separate place to maintain the solution. So it's, it's, it's uh, separated. It also leverages Exchange to sync out-of-office calendars. If it is uh, out-of-office, uh, I think it's four hours is the minimum. So if it's above four hours, it will automatically reduce the um, capacity that the resource might have in Project Server, which is a, a whole new thing, actually, and something that a lot of people have been asking for for, for many years as well. It's particularly important for vacations. Absolutely. Obviously, you know, somebody going away for four hours in a week is possibly not a problem. But if they're away for two weeks, the resource managers really want to see that. Yeah. And finally, as I said before, it uh, leverages Link Server now to do presence information in both PWA, Project Web App, and, and Project the Client also. Great. So going back to um, the next topic here, which is development. Ian? By the way, there was going to be some demo. It's not all going to be death by PowerPoint, OK? So um, saving them. Uh, <laughs> we, it's, it gets really good, I promise. <laughs> um, there's a lot of information to deliver to you in a relatively short space yeah. of time. Um, I think what's clear is that the, the way that we build this stuff, whether with the way we build it, build it inside Microsoft or the way you build the extensions to it, are consistent between SharePoint and a project online or project server. So it's the same UI, it's the same tooling, whether you're building SharePoint apps or you're building project, web, project apps. The difference is obviously you've got other calls within the SDKs that you would have to use to access the project data. So the tools that you use, whether they're the um, simple tools like the uh, Visio tooling or more complex tools through Visual Studio or others, it, it doesn't matter. You can build workflows that just work on SharePoint, or you can build workflows that work on SharePoint and on Project. Uh, it's the same tooling that you're going to use each time. Um, we've also got really nice integration with all sorts of web services. So you can do some really interesting stuff, both in terms of what you do in the server and also the way that you surface these apps, as you will see shortly, within the client. And so depending on what you're doing, the apps can actually deliver you the information you need. And there's some really good examples of this that we'll be showing you. Um, and obviously, uh, right from within the client, whether it's the, the offline, the the Project Professional client, Project Pro, or within the web client, you can go to the store, see what's available, what's actually generally available for everybody, or what's been purchased by your organization that you've made available to your users. So it's a great way of reaching out to applications that you probably didn't even know existed, because often the markets that we have are frag not fragmented in the right word, but it's difficult for, uh, say, a Danish developer of applications like uh, Peter's company, Projectomar, to maybe reach South America and actually show those apps to people in Brazil and the same the other way around. Now all of those things are visible to all of us, which really gives us a, a great insight as to what uh, the market is doing in terms of building some fantastic extensions to the project environment. Absolutely. Um, so if we look at the project client extensibility, for those who've worked with it before, you can more or less still do the same. So it has, for those who know, extensive options for doing configurations. There is the custom fields, views. Um, some of you call them columns. Um, visual reporting. There's also the new project uh, reporting area that, again, we're going to show later live, uh, including the burn down reporting. It's just put up there because everybody's asked about it when they do Scrum or Agile projects. Can we do a burn down? But now it can. Um, and uh, the ribbon in general can be customized as well. And also using VBA or Visual Basic for applications, you can obviously manipulate the object model or do com add-ins as well. So that has not changed at all. Um, what is new actually is that the apps are now also within the client. So apps is not for the server, it's also for the client. I'm going to give a, an example for that just in a few minutes. Um, so massive extensibility options for, um, for the it, client. It's worth noting that uh, in Corp, the person who is responsible for this whole apps model is the same person who is responsible for the project server and project client builds. So our team is absolutely front and center of this technology. So you know, we are leaders in this area. Great. 
So for those who don't know what an app is for Office, um, it's a web page of some kind shown within the Office client. Um, so it could be within the document if it was a Word app. So within that document, it could be a map that shows some, some results from, um, from Bing Maps, for instance. When it comes to project, the client, it's in the right side as, an, as a task pane, just as similar to, to what you see in, um, in Outlook. And this is what is actually supported using uh, the Project Pro or Professional 2013. And it could also be a contextual app, so it has content that, is, that senses different data sources within, um, just similar to a web part, uh, within, for instance, the Word document as well. So those are the three different ways of working with apps and the client. But it's the one in the middle that is supported by, by Project. And the way it looks is that you add, I'm just going, maybe just going to do that live instead, um, but just to take these two screen dumps initially, you add your apps after having searched for them, and in the right side pane here, you'll get this, for instance, a guide like in Sensei's task analyzers case here. Um, they added a tool that will walk through or go through your project plan and find out whether or not you have stuff that shouldn't be there, links that are missing, resources allocated to fast uh, phases, or stuff like that that has uh, relevance for the, for the PM. Um, to give you a live example on that, I'm just going to launch my project client. So we just take, um, let's just take a simple plan. So this is Project the Client 2013, um, which we're not going to show you in details today. There will be more of that tomorrow, actually, um, tomorrow noon. But um, going to the, to the Project tab up here, we have Apps for Office as a new button. And by clicking that one, we can see different apps. Right now, there's two available, the Shark Pro Insight and Sensei Project Dashboard. And if you need this app, you click on it and insert it. And in the right side pane, it will then be loaded. And in this case, you have to buy it. Because uh, I've been running the trial for too much. That's why I showed you the screen dump. But um, again, trials are available initially. And then after those typically 30 days, you will have to buy it. And for many of you, that would mean that the IT administrator using the apps management uh, uh, side of it would um, have to go in and buy it. As I'm guessing, not everybody has a, a Visa card or MasterCard for the whole business that, that, that they're in. Um, so this is the way that the apps work um, in the client. Just um, since we're already in the client, sorry, here, there was a, a talk about the, the timeline. So um, I'm just going to give you an example on the, the question that, that there was earlier. We still have the timeline up here, which we also do, obviously, or did have in uh, 2010. And by just doing this, to just make an example of what was asked about earlier. We can do a timeline quite fast by just right-clicking and editing to the, to the timeline up here. And then from this point, we can then manipulate the timeline so it could be shown in yellow, shown like this. This could be shown in green, and so on. And from the project side of it, let me just go to my instance. From project center, we have the timeline up here as well which is the same. This is just shown across the whole portfolio. And just to make sure that you, you see that, that, that there is no difference, by clicking on it, we get the same tools for changing the timeline uh, visual layout. So we can change this to be blue instead, uh, if we wanted it to be, and so on. Um, so this is why I think Ian earlier said that there's no difference between working in the client or here. And if you do changes within the client, it will be shown automatically here as well. So it goes both ways, it synchronizes. Great. Um, let me just skip back to this one quite easily. Yes, the tool for, for doing client development in general, um, first of all, I would recommend going to an Office app development session because it, it is exactly the same as doing regular Office uh, development for, for doing other apps in general. But you can obviously use Visual Studio 2012, also the add-on called the Office Developer Tools for Visual Studio. Um, there are some nice templates you can, you can use as well, and it, there's a debugging um, area where, where you can quite easily find out what is wrong before you obviously upload it or test it. Um, and then at the bottom here, you can still use, as always, the text editor to, use your, to, to build up your, your code, uh, obviously. And this brings us to development when it comes to Project Server and Online, and also a lot of the demos that we want to show now. Um, 
Let's just take a brief view on, on the project server architecture. Again, it, it's, it, it consists of several layers. We have the database layer at the bottom. We have the app layer and the web front end layer. Um, we don't have the time to, to go through all of them, but, but what is worth mentioning here is, is uh, first of all, what Ian said earlier, that you know, browsers are now supported using uh, multiple browsers, uh, not just uh, IE, so Safari, Chrome, um, and so on, Firefox. And we also have um, something called CSUM, JSUM, and CSUM is quite relevant for those of you who want to do apps or add-ons for the project client, because then the client, CSUM means that you can actually use SharePoint data uh, from the data available from SharePoint lists directly within the project client using CSUM as a, as a technology. OData is new as well. Um, because you have no access to the, to the reporting database using Project Online, you still have to get your data out and, and do some BI or reporting, which I'm going to show you. And for that reason, we use uh, OData as the technology to do that. Um, and you authenticate it as well uh, by just you being the user uh, up against um, the databases. I'm going to give you live examples. And then, yes, the work management server as well. I don't know if you want to say something. I just, I just yeah, wanted yeah. To, um, um, when we say you not, have no access to the databases on Project Online, um, there is a reason for this. It isn't just a, a, a <clears throat> uh, some sort of arbitrary decision that's been made by Microsoft. You can't touch the data. This is because you're in a multi-tenanted environment. And if you were to be running very poor SQL queries, you could slow up the whole of the particular host that you're running on. And of course, you would be sharing this host with other organizations. And so the way we do that is to abstract the data using web services, using OData, and not allowing you to directly interface with those tooling. It's also to do with the safe harbor and the fact that we secure the data. And so we don't really let anybody touch the data. Even the guys who are on um, support for the Office 365, they have no uh, access to your data directly. In fact, if they needed to physically get to a server, they have to get permission from some sort of divisional general manager to even open the cabinet to go into a machine. It's incredibly secure, mm. irrespective of what you met, you might have heard of recently. Yeah. So there is a you know the whole Office 365 environment and Project Online in particular really adheres to the highest standards of security management and OData and the CSOM JSON is an outcome of that and, uh, and really is focused on ensuring the integrity of your content. And the final thing from mentioning from this slide is, is uh, on the app server as well, is the calculation service, which is what Ian talked about earlier, that you take the, the client uh, calculation engine or scheduling engine and put it on the server side as well so that your project web app and the scheduled web part in the project web app can behave just as, as the project client will, will normally do it. Um, Ideas for building apps could be various. There's a lot of them um, and a lot of templates already out there. We're going to go directly to that now. Um, but it could be building up custom templates uh, for, for, for customers to, to, that are running strict PMI methodologies or Prince2 or other kind of standards. Um, it could be line of business application integration. So you get your, your, your resource data, for instance, from your ERP solution or your cost data. Um, reporting dashboards and web parts, building up S-curves and other kinds of, of nice BI stuff that should be available as an app. Um, training guides, videos, automated guides and wizards for how to use the portal could be an idea as well. This is not just an idea for, for project partners to build and make money out of. It, this is also ideas for, for internal uh, companies or for companies in general when they're rolling out project server. Sometimes I only see Word documents uh, being the, what is passed on uh, as uh, this is the training material, but often you could just might as well be a, a video directly within the project web app where you can see how you actually should use the tool. That's just an idea, obviously. Um, and then again, apps for mobile devices can be built as well. So you can, you can do your time sheeting or task updating directly by using either your Outlook tasks um, on your cell phone, for instance, but it could also be to build a whole new way of uh, doing your time sheets in a new grid. Um, so those are ideas for doing apps. Um, extensibility, when it comes to on-premise and online. Well, online, um, the extensibility is via the SharePoint module, at, as there is no trust um, um, as in project on, uh, sorry, on premise. Uh, reporting, like Ian just said, is done using OData, as we don't have direct access to the SQL site or the, the databases. Um, and there's also no OLAP, for those of you who have been using that as a reporting tool uh, previously. That is not within the... the the online that is only 
or not only, but that is using just OData. Uh, we access it using CSAM, and we, have, we can also work with remote event receivers, so it doesn't have to be within the SharePoint farm. Um, when it comes to on-premise, we can do all of the above, uh, plus we have full access, obviously, to databases, full access to PSI and CSAM, and the event handlers that Project Server uses. Um, just to, to, to talk about the, 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 briefly the hybrid, uh, we also have Azure as a place where you could get the, the online, meaning no support, uh, no maintenance uh, internally, and still get access to the databases. That would be the Azure way of doing it. Um, so you could create an infrastructure Azure service and put your whole project server farm up there, SharePoint, for, SharePoint as well, and, and then be able to do exactly what is in the bottom, but not having the responsibility to maintain the, the solution. There's a lot more on that comparison uh, between those two models uh, using um, the project SDK and the link at the bottom where you can compare those two. If you are deploying uh, Project Server 2013 on-premise, but you think that you may be taking it to a full services-based solution in the cloud moving forward, then any customization that you do, we would strongly suggest that you use the CSOM model and not use the PSI model because as, as is clear, you cannot use the PSI model in the cloud, you only can use the CSOM model in the cloud. And because you can use the CSOM on-premise as well, that's where you should be doing it if you know that you're gonna move forward. If you are committed to staying on-premise, uh, you have no intention of moving to uh, a full so software as a service in the future, then continue to use the PSI, but you know, I would suspect that we're gonna be putting a lot more investment in the CSOM as we move forward. Great. So, um, how does the add-ons look? Well, this is, a, this is actually an example from, from, uh, from my company, a product we built called the Resource Manager. This is uh, using Silverlight and a web part that is wrapped within Silverlight um, for on-premise installation, so you can do resource forecasting and, uh, and have this integration be interaction between line managers and project managers handled within the project server solution. That is a tool built for that. So, it could look like this, and if you want to look at apps doing all within the project online instance, um, the way you find, find them is, let's just take it from the main page here. This is the project web app. Um, by the way, the, this one here is uh, customized uh, for my needs. So just for the record, you can customize the default uh, ribbon that is shown within the, the, the main screen here quite easily and without any code at all. Um, by navigating in the upper right corner, we have the, the option of adding apps to our project web app. And this will then load up the apps that you can add, which is apps we have previously downloaded. But you could also go directly to the SharePoint store, where you can browse for um, apps, for instance, that has something to do with project. Not project server, but project as a term. So you might find other apps that is not completely project server or online relevant, but just has the word project within the tags. Um, here you have different ones that are, uh, for instance, available within or used within Project Server online. It's the Shark Pro, the GPG, um, that shows you something about the VPS structure, uh, a risk chart that can be added onto a SharePoint site so you can have this matrix kind of look and feel for your risk uh, lists. Um, UMT is also there, just to mention it. It's, this is the cost benefit financial model that is, uh, for some of you, quite useful if you're doing extensive uh, financial project work. Um, so this is also available as an app already, uh, and more will come, obviously, during the next uh, months and so. But if we wanted to, to add an app, it could be the Publish All Projects, because for those of you who have been working with Project Server for a long time, I think you would know that it, it's quite nice sometimes to know that every project has been published, uh, so nobody is missing any updates. So this is an app built by a project MVP, actually. Um, by clicking on it, we can add it directly by just clicking this button. Also, rating is possible. Um, when we add it, we have to confirm that we trust it as well, because this will now be introduced to our instance of Project Web App. Um, so we just wait a little bit, and it's now adding the app. So if we update the page, it shouldn't take long, depending on the speed. There we go. This app is now available. Uh, so if we go to projects in the ribbon up here, we now have a new button called Publish All Projects. Yes, there was a question. No, just a remark that uh, that button generates multiple emails. Emails? Yeah, if you uh, notify uh, everyone involved in the projects for the project update, if you publish all projects at the same 
Yes. Yeah. So, so okay. So the point that's being yeah. made, just for those who are listening online, is that if you publish all your projects, you may be generating a lot of task allocations, for example, to individuals uh, as a, a bit of a, a, a an email storm or a task storm going out. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you may still want to do this during a, um, a development phase or testing phase to ensure that everything is aligned. So it's not just necessarily you might not want to use it just in a production environment. In fact, you probably wouldn't want to use it in a production environment. Okay. Great. So that was just a, a simple example on, on how to add the, the app. Um, just going back again. Uh, other apps, just to, to, to show you briefly, could be the, again, the, this is a, a milestone trend analysis uh, report from TPG. Um, there's an add-on for the timesheets that enables you to uh, track your time by using a start and stop button. So if you do a lot of services or tickets during the day, this is a quite useful app for project server as well. UMT has a complete uh, financial server um, setting, actually, where you can set up your cost structure, your cost sensors, and so on and then add to your projects um, a cost-benefit analysis but using custom fields that are time-faced in fiscal years or in, in, in quarters, months, and so on. So now let's go a little bit to, to, to the live demos and data. Um, business intelligence is, is uh, and has always been, in my opinion, very strong in, in Project Server. Um, there are two aspects of it. We have the project managers that has this new ribbon which I showed you earlier. Um, but now you're going to see it live in just a second. But it, this is what looks ex exactly like Excel when you do the reports. It has a pivot table, and you can do a lot of nice um, visual charting as well um, on top of it. So that, those are examples of that. I'm just going to go to it live instead, I think, of these slides. And for um, online, we have two data sources. We have the, the regular relation, uh, re relational reporting database, that's the word, and the multi-dimensional OLAP databases, which is only available in on-premise. So the number one would be for, for the, the online users, uh, where they would use OData to, to get hold of the, the data. Um, and the visualization, again, is relying solely on, on the BI projects that you are using within your SharePoint um, solution. So it could be, just to make it brief, it could be Excel services, which could look like this. It could be Visio services as well, which could show your reports like this. Um, power view, where all the different zones are interacted, interacted with, to, inter, interlinked maybe to, to each other. So if you press one place, it will automatically update the others. And SQL reporting services obviously is still available and has a report builder um, called 3.0, which is quite powerful to building those um, nice look and feel reports that you see there. So to give you um, some examples on this um, from the client side and the server side, um, Doing reports in the project client could be to do it on just one project, which is what many people would do. They would bring up their project. Um, maybe this project would have some, some progress. And by simply navigating to the report section, you will have um, different ways of doing reports to uh, depending on whether or not you want a full dashboard on your project, just looking at the resources, cost, in progress, um, and whatever kind of other features you would like to build. If, if you still like the uh, 1990 look and feel of reports, the visual reports button is still there, okay? Uh, but what you're about to see is, it doesn't replace it, but I think most people will use it rather than using what you have been using up to now, which is the visual reports. Exactly. So we just, for instance, take the, some of the default reports which are up here, project overview. These are shipped in the box. Exactly. And this will bring you a report that looks like this. So, so this will show in this case which phases have been done, how far are we with the project as a, as a whole, what milestones are due, late tasks. But the nice thing is that if you click it, you'll get a full design tab up here, similar to what you would see in Excel. So you don't have to move out of the project to do the Excel look and feel reporting. So from here you can quickly change the look and feel again, but also the fields that you want to integrate within the report. So if you want more than just the percentages, if you want something about priority, that will be available as well. Um, or going to the work, what is the actual work performed on each task, and so on. So this is a, a full pivot table available with filters, grouping, outline levels, and sorting, um, as seen as in, um, in Excel. But what I also like and, and, and really love to, to show, actually, is that this tool is not just for the, for the PMs or the project managers doing just a one project report. 
If we look at the project center here, we could have multiple projects that could be grouped in you know, different ways, depending on who is the owner. In this case, I'm the only owner of all the projects. But owners, uh, categories, types, whatever you want to, you know, programs, portfolios, departments. And if you wanted to do a report, for instance, on these projects, um, a full report, you could just open, just by selecting, selecting them the way I just did it, right, by just uh, clicking on them, select open in Microsoft Project, and it will build a temporary, uh, which some of you might call a master plan, but it's not a real master plan. Because now you'll get the overview from the four projects within this um, client, and if you wanted to do a full timeline for the four projects, or eight projects, or whatever you've chosen, you just right-click them and add them to the timeline, and you get this view, which many people like. And from this view, you could then directly use it in your emails, presentation, and if it's copied for, for PowerPoint, you could still change the values, so you can hide something, perhaps, or change something, and so on, style it a little bit using PowerPoint. So that is a nice feature. So it's not just a screen dump that is taken and pushed into PowerPoint. It's actually a full way of working with, with the timeline. But going back to the report section up here, um, the reports I just showed you, dashboard, will also do the same as you just showed, uh, saw, but across all the projects. So now you get a portfolio overview on the, the, the percent complete on the, this project compared to the demo internally and so on. And the other projects such as the burn down is quite nice as well. Um, in this case, there is no burn down because <laughs> nothing has been reported as completed, not enough at least to, um, to show it. Just a second. Or maybe it has to do with me not being, not having allocated any resources. Yeah, I need a baseline to do this, sorry. <laughs> um, but just for the record, it supports burn down. And burn down meaning that it takes the number of tasks or hours, and every time a task has been completed, meaning 100%, it has to be 100%, it will capture the time when it was completed and do the burn down for you, which is a nice thing that, that was not possible in, uh, in 2010 as out of the box. Um, resources overview shows you the resources allocated within the projects. Uh, again, across all the projects, you have cost f cash flow, uh, cost reports, if you use cost in your projects. In this case, there's not a lot to set up. Um, and again, you can build your own projects by doing the, going to the custom tab or using the guide that will automatically walk you through how to actually build a report um, within the ribbon up here. So, I just wanted to mention that it's quite powerful to use the client also if you are in a portfolio role or program manager role, so you don't have to do a, a full master plan with links in between and so on to do the reporting. So that was the, the, the quick one in terms of, um, of the project client reporting capabilities. Do you think, how, how many of you have used this? Any of you use this? Any of you would like to use this? <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think this is, in terms of the single well, there's many moves forward in 2013. Some of them you don't see. Very few you do see, but this is one of the ones that are, is incredibly powerful and really gives power back to the project manager and to the PMO to produce stuff in what is a very intuitive way. You know, you're not really required to know very much because the starters we give you are so rich. Of course, you can put your logos on, you can build your own standard reporting packs and ship those uh, when you start up projects through the project center. So I think that it's one of the uh, real big improvements and I know that it's ex landing extremely well when I'm talking to customers across Europe, is that, which I do yeah. on a regular basis. And just before I build a report using OData in, in Excel, um, there's just one thing I want to show you because that's when we use the OData as a feeder for, uh, for building reports. Um, OData actually works with online but also on-premise if you want to do it, it, it there. So it, uh, it both, works both, uh, both ways. Um, there's, a, there's, up, there's an object model, meaning there's, there's different views to, 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 you know, to um, translate it into something that we understand. There's, there's different views that you can access uh, using OData. It could be regarding the projects, the tasks, issues, risks, assignments, and so on. You could also build your own um, views uh, by just adding the, the custom fields that you would like to be on board the, the OData query, uh, or use the existing one, obviously. And the way you build it up is that you go through Excel, which I'm going to do now, and you just add, uh, for instance, this link that you have here, directly within uh, the client, um, which is meaning that it's the server name, slash the, the, the PWA, and then slash this one here. So if you want to look at the projects, you just add this. If it's task-related, you add this, and so on, unless you obviously build your own as well. 
Um, so just to switch over and do it here, I'm just going to copy-paste the, the link that I'm going to need before switching over here. Yep. Um, so once you have your path, let's just start with a blank sheet here. Let's go to Excel. Um, OData is supported using Excel 2013. So if you're using 2010 or pre previous versions, you will not see uh, from this one up here the OData feeder, which is a problem, obviously, for some of you who have not implemented Excel 2013. But there are apps out there, again, apps for Office, that will you know, uh, enable this to you directly. So I'm, I'm going to speed it up, yeah. <laughs> um, by hitting this one, we can then paste in the link that we need. And this will then load the, the query or the OData. And then we can select the table that we want to do some reporting on. It could be just, as an example, the projects. And by hitting Next and Finish, and yes, then we can build a table or pivot table report. And it will then load the data to my client. And on the right side, we can then add, for instance, a report regarding um, the projects that are running. Notice how much the information there is. So it, it is useful to actually go into the, the query and, and change it so you only show the, the, the data you want to show. Otherwise, end users can be quite confused. But it could be project uh, name. Quick uh, question, yeah. Uh, question regarding uh, access rights. Access rights. Yeah. How do you restrict the access rights is the question to people who you do not want to have uh, reporting rights against the data? Yeah. You, you, you can handle these rights uh, server side as well. Um, we also still use a secure store in SharePoint Central for, for managing who has access and who has not. Um, but to pulling the data out obviously uh, needs to have a security model, which can be done. So that's the quick answer. It can be done in SharePoint using... Um, using SharePoint uh, configuration. Um, and again, the, just to, to make it even more understandable maybe, the data connection files is where you would do the, the, the permissions on. So this data connection that controls these uh, eight custom fields related to project can be accessed by the PMs. So the data connection and the refresh functionality in the data connection will then have this group of people accessing it. So it's on the data connection layer as well you can control it. Um, this is a report, again, that now has refresh options within it, pulling data out. It's not an OLAP cube, meaning that it doesn't have to build every night. Uh, so it's, it's updated automatically and instantly. So just to give you, because of the time we have left, I'm um, just going to speed it up. This is another example, again, using the same data source as we just saw. Um, if you did changes to this report, for instance, um, you, said you did wanted this to look um, like this instead, and hit Save. The cool thing here, which I'm going to show you now, is how can we get this report up and running on our SharePoint instance. So let's just load this one, or close it, sorry, and go to the project web app. It's going to go fast now. I'm going to go to the reports section, which for some strange reason I have to log on to. Sorry. And in here I have my report repository. And if we take this OData example, which is not available here, and just drag it in like this, and open it, it is now there. So this, is, this has never been easier to do website or web server um, reporting and even refreshes as well. So for the PMOs to do the reporting themselves now, not needing any developers to do this, is obviously something that can be done right now using just your Excel skills and the, the hand to do a drag and drop <laughs> into your reporting folder. Um, so yes, that was the, the, the BI side of, um, of this one. So, that's, so what you've seen there works for on-premise or in the cloud? It's yes, exactly both the ways. same. OData works in both environments, same reports, no changes. Exactly. There are multiple other ways of doing reporting besides just the Excel. You can use Performance Point like we showed you uh, and, and SQL obviously for doing reporting services. Because of time, we cannot go into that details. But if you want to come by the stand, we, could show uh, you. we will show you. Yeah. Okay, so please feel free to do that. Uh, there's a lot, as you saw before, there's lots of reporting options. Uh, but I think for most of you, what you've seen there should be quite attractive because yes. it doesn't take a lot of training to show somebody how to retrieve the data from the uh, project data store bring it into Excel, and then as long as they've got some reasonable Excel skills, 
they can produce the sorts of reports that they want to see. Exactly. Good. So before we move ahead to the, to the, the next steps and how to get started, um, we, we have some five minutes to do a quick yeah. Q&A. Before we, yeah, we don't want to run out of time and not give you a chance to ask any exactly. questions. So, uh, question at the back. Any news about the Agile? Okay, fine. So the question is, is there any news about Agile uh, in this environment? Well, uh, as you know, in 2010, we have integration with Team Foundation Server on-premise, and that's the same in uh, 2013. We have integration with CFS 2012 on-premise. In the cloud, at the at right now, there isn't integration. Um, I believe it's being worked on at the moment, but exactly when that's to be delivered, I can't, I wouldn't con I can't commit to because I don't know uh, what their um, uh, deployment plans are on that. Uh, but there is a lot of very effective work going between t um, moving um, deliverables between project server into team foundation server and progress back into team into the project server and resource management and all those things that you may want to do. So it's a very rich integration between TFS and project server, but primarily at present on premise. Yeah. Um, but another thing also to, to add to that um, is because many people ask this, obviously. Um, but you need to know as well that, that if you just do this, the top-down approach, which is what many people would love to have, um, let's just do a quick plan here, is actually uh, an option as well within yeah. the client. So you don't have to do the bottom-up planning like you maybe are used to. Um, if, you've worked, if you haven't worked with 2010, I don't know about the manual or auto-schedule. Um, auto-scheduling means that you, would have, you will have to start from the bottom, like this, to build up a phase, whereas in, in Agile or Scrum, you would start with the phase perhaps, and then later on find out what should actually go on beneath the phase. And also working with the auto schedule engine means that you have to provide, for instance, duration. So if you write a name here, it will not be accepted. Or if you try to delete the finish date because you don't know when it's going to finish, you cannot. And that will just destroy the, the, the Agile way of working as well. So in this case, you have multiple ways of working with, with um, Agile. First of all, um, you can use the, the manual schedule, meaning that you can start with defining the phase and then later on define your activities. You can even say, I don't know, in this one, as a duration. And you can say, but I know it has to finish at this particular point in time and even see it in here. So this is another way of working. And the final one I want to show you is that if you work with it like this and you made building blocks, meaning that we know that we're going to do this testing at some point, but we're not sure if we're going to do it uh, right now or at all. So you could take this one, even though it has been estimated, and inactivate it. And if I just show you the, this level zero up here, you would see that, um, just let me do something so you can get a sense of what I want to go for, like this. If this one should be inactivated, or these two, let's just take the whole face, you could just click this button, and it will remove also from the summaries or, or summar the summarizations up here, all the data that was relevant for this phase. And then later on, if you need it, you can then add it again by just deactivating it, and it will calculate into the duration field. So that is another way of working with Scrum and Agile. And finally, you have support for the, the burn-down charting. So I think that's the whole package you need to do the, the real Agile. Uh, and obviously, with TFS as well, it's even more powerful. Another question. Okay, so the question is, um, is there a different licensing model in 2013? I'm going to summarize it because of time, between 2013 and 2010. And the answer is quite simply, there is no difference in licensing at all. It's exactly the same licensing model. If you want to discuss that in detail, come by the stand and I'll go through it with you in detail. And you can make your case to me. 
I'm not entirely unsympathetic to it, but I don't have necessarily the, the influence or the power to make any changes, but I can ask people. So please stop, stop by. But right now, licensing for 2013 on premise is exactly the same for those licenses as 2010. Right, we, one more, time for one more question as long as it's quick. Yeah, one more. Do I think there's business opportunities for apps generally? I think we'll not try and answer that now because of time, but if you'd like to discuss that afterwards, I'm more than happy to do that. All right. So let's All right. just, we'll do the wrap-up slides now. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of related content as well um, tomorrow, and we, we have, uh, actually, this is not the updated one. I'm so, uh, sorry, I have to switch. There's an updated one that I have here, which is much better. <laughs> Today, 12 o'clock, uh, there's an instructor lit lab where you can go through the, the whole project client SharePoint experience, um, which is uh, a lab as well. Um, so that, that is available. And tomorrow at fifth, uh, quarter past three, there's a breakout session similar to this, but at uh, level 200, I think. Uh, again, showing you the project uh, online capabilities, SharePoint as well, and client side, but uh, from a non-developer, maybe non-technical perspective. And then, as Ian said multiple times, you can find us at the booth, obviously. We want to give a lot of demos, so please drop by so we can show you. Um, and then, is it, is this, oh, sorry, <laughs> there's too many screens. <laughs> and then, for other resources, Channel 9, meaning that the videos, this has been recorded, other sessions as well, TechNet, Learning, MSDN, you can download these slides and get the, the, the links uh, There's you need. loads and loads of resources yeah. available. I mean, and this lots. one, even, even more. This is a whole slide I put in just for you to get quick access to, to the most useful links in terms of uh, project server, especially the new one. And please, we have not more time left, please evaluate the session as well by using this, uh, this tag if you, um, if you prefer to, to scan it. Um, I know you will leave it here or... I'll move on, I think. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. And but again, um, just as a final thing for you to know, you can go to microsoft.com uh, slash project and um, learn about it, try it, download a trial for project server on premise, um, and prepare yourself. So this is all the time we had. Actually, we are yeah, out of time. I'd like to thank you all for being yes. here. Thank you uh, so much. Especially this early start in the morning. And uh, those of you who are listening to this online, thank you for listening to this as well. And those of you here, Come and talk to us at the booth. Uh, we'll probably have to clear this room ready for the next ones. But come and see us. Lots more to talk about. Some great reporting that people at Peter can show you that is just superb and very easy to do. Thank you very much. Thank you.